Hi guys, Squad here. Welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory. Now, in the last episode, if you remember, we basically rebuilt our uh, power production, our coal mining power production plant, which is off down there. And uh, what I've done since is just got rid of this little bio thing that we had kicking around. And as I promised in the last one, I've also put in a few walkways. So I've got these little walkways here so I can just walk up there like that you put a little door section here like this and i'll put a couple like one over there and one further down just to give us the ability to get around the plant a little bit easier so i've just done a little bit of tidying up that's all nothing nothing too crazy what i want to do today is get into the steel the steel production now in order to get into steel production uh we need to basically let's see we need to unlock um the steel uh, technology in the tech tree so let's uh, have a quick look at that uh, tier 4 steel production if we select that as a milestone we're going to have to throw a few items into here a thousand of these copper things uh, 200 cables 10 modular frames and 50 rotors now the rotors is not a big deal we can stick that in straight now uh, the modular frames requires uh, so if we need 10 of them the modular frames we can easily make because we have the ingredients on us so we can throw that in there uh, the copper we can easily get. Three, four, five, ten. There we go. Uh, so we'll stick that in there. We'll stick this in there as well. And that can go. And the only thing we're missing is just a few more of those. So if we quickly run upstairs. Now upstairs is going to be about copper and steel. That's what I'm proposing to use up here. Downstairs will be, will be all about the iron. Uh, so that's the ones we're looking for. We'll just follow that through. And we'll grab 500. We'll make sure we've got a spare 500. And we'll also grab some more of these cables because what I want to do is go and, should be enough, is go and um, find a coal mine and bring, belt the coal back here. So, of course, we're going to need to get power over there. And we're going to need to belt it all the way back. So that's going to be fun because we've got quite a long distance to go, I think. Uh, let's have a look. Drop that into in there. A few more cables. Okay, looks like we're going to have to go and get some more cables. Because I don't want to only have 47. Right. That's a big milestone. Milestone reached. Steel production unlocked. Foundry and improved miner included to ensure efficiency of new pipelines. A collection of new, more complex parts is now available for crafting. Okay, so steel is just like is one of those big uh, tech upgrade items that you need to get at some point. Uh, that's fine. Make sure we've got plenty. So what steel has unlocked is, if you can find it, the minor two. As you can see, this one here, it says extraction rate 60 resources, extraction rate 120. So it, it literally doubles the amount that you're getting from any given mine. That is a big deal. But it does mean that you have to have mark two conveyor belts to get it out of there because it's coming out at 120 but if you notice some of the ingredients that the mark two miner needs uh, obviously it needs the miner but it needs encased industrial beams steel pipes and cables so these are new this is going to be made with steel uh, now the foundry interestingly enough is the thing that smelts steel it, it basically takes iron ore and coal and it makes steel but the really interesting thing about the foundry is it needs products that are based on steel to actually make the foundry to make the steel. So you end up with a chicken and egg. So we're going to have to basically make these at the craft bench in order to make our first foundry. But the foundry we can worry about later. The first thing we have to worry about is basically getting the, uh, the coal into here. So if we go for a coal scan, don't think there's anything nearby. The first one that's going to ping, I think, will be the power plant, which is that one. That's roughly where the power plant is. We've got 1789 towards the archway. 1.1k that way. Now, I seem to remember we went off in that direction at one point, and it was a bit of a nightmare to get to. Um, but maybe we can sort of build our way there. Uh, that's uh, that's one solution. Let's take a... Let's make sure we've got plenty of concrete with us so that we can platform over any... Because last time we just didn't have the resources that we we have now. Uh, we have many more options. We can build castles in the sky now, quite literally. We can just build a platform right over a, 
you know, a toxic area or an archway or what, like whatever it is, we can build our way to it. Um, it just requires concrete. So we'll head off in that direction. Um, I think we maybe dropped power poles down there. Yes, we did look on that previous trip. I remember us aborting that and giving it up as a bad idea, but we'll see where it goes this time. Maybe I put some ramps down as well. I can't remember. Actually, I remember going through the archways a little bit of a bio nest, so we'll uh, we'll kind of go this way. While we're up here, let's have a quick look at the space elevator. Uh, let me just see if there's anything that we should be working on for that because I can't remember exactly. I can't remember exactly what we should be doing on this one. Not as the space the space elevator's got inputs as well, uh, which is obviously interesting. Uh, let's see. So they're looking for um, 150 motors and 500 modular frames to unlock five and six. Now, 500 modular frames, that's going to take a bit of time to do. And so is the, uh, the motors. We're going to have to automate some stuff before we can do that one. Let's, oh, there's a shard up there. You see it? It's like a green, sh a green worm thing. Power slug, whatever. Halfway up the archway. So we'll drive around here, and we'll jump out, Let's see if we can figure out where the iron is. It'll be about 400 metres away at this point. Okay, that will do. It. 258, right. It kind of looks like it's up, I remember. I think maybe it's on, on top of that thing. Now, in terms of getting there, what we could do... Typical Bob the Builder style. If we aim one of these at it, like that. And then we basically put a ramp bar to get onto it. And then we can just casually build our way over. And basically traverse this otherwise pretty hostile land. Now, there's two ways of getting coal. One of them is to build a belt all the way back here. And the other one is, and I talked about this in the last uh, episode, the other one is to, whoops, use trucks to do it. I thought it'd fall through then. <laughs> uh, actually, let's start an incline at this point. So we want an incline. So what I'm doing is I'm just alternating between a flat platform and then an incline on top of it. Now, the there are four meter inclines that go with the four meter pieces. And obviously they're four meters deep instead of two meters deep. And they do obviously elevate a lot quicker, but the truck does seem to struggle quite a bit on the four meter deep ones. So if possible, not sure we're going to make it now. If possible, I would like to use... Come on. Okay, we just built a random slope. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to get away with it, so we're going to have to... I, mean, I thought we built a random slope. We're going to have to go steep at this point, so the, the truck will struggle a little bit. Um, if we go for foundations... See, these here are four meters high, so we'll... Uh, We'll put that on the hotkey, and we'll put that on the hotkey, and we'll do that. Come on. Oh, it's so pixel faff, this. It's pretty hard to get done what you want to get done sometimes, because you're trying to fight in with the UI in 3D. I've heard some people say they'd love to play this game in uh, in VR. I kind of beg to differ. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much I would enjoy that. We could um, we could turn here. That would be one option to try and make this gradient. But to do that, we'll have to. It's a lot steeper than I thought. Blimey.
Let's do a little switch back. Where we are. Okay, well, we're uh, more or less there now. I'm, of course, assuming that the mine is actually up here. Actually, you know what? Let's um, let's switch to the thin floor. Like that. Just elevate our way over the top. Okay, is this the mine here? Yeah, there we go. Nice. So there's the coal mine right there. Um, it doesn't have any rich thing to get, but that's fine. So if you want to go down the truck stop route, we're going to have to build a truck stop up here, which means we'll need a bit of a flat platform, not only for the truck stop, but also for the truck to turn around. Let's quickly get rid of that. So if we switch to the chainsaw... Get rid of those leaves. There we go. And then double click to put that back in. And we've accumulated some leaves, which I don't want, so I'm just gonna drop that into the bin there. Same with the wood. Just I just don't care about it anymore. Like I could compress it down into biofuel, but frankly I've got so much of it right now. Okay. We're going to have to run power lines up here, of course. Now, I don't know if we've got enough to build a truck stop. Let's build the mine first, because I did bring enough for that. Now, we could go for mine at Mark 1, or we can go straight in for Mark 2. The trouble is, we don't have the steel yet for Mark 2, so we'll just stick with the Mark 1, and maybe we'll come back later. Uh, now, if we're going to feed this into the truck stop, probably want to point it, like, in that kind of direction. Uh, if we go to this, a truck station requires 10 modular frames. Um... One of the things I often like to do at these little outposts is just build a crafting bench. Now, that is one on the back of the truck, of course, but um, I just like it to have one lying around as well. So if we build... Oh, we're going to build nine. What are we short on? We need to build one at the other end as well, one back at the base. I think we're short on the rods. Oh, dang it. Right, that's really annoying because we are <laughs> sarcastically one modular frame from being able to build that, uh, which is deeply depressing. So what we'll do, though, is we won't waste our time here. We shall... Oh, I, I can't believe that. I didn't bring the iron ingots. Actually annoyed right now. So we're going to have to have the long walk of shame like this back to the vehicle and... Um, grab some iron rods okay i ran back to the truck grabbed some iron rods and while i was on my way back i basically put power lines uh, so we've got the power line back here it's not connected yet to the grid we need to make that final connection i also just built a couple of walls around here just to stop us from falling off and um i turned this slightly because i realized that it would be better if we turned it so that we can do my usual thing where we chuck it into a storage container first like that so essentially just buffer it uh, we will use a Mark II conveyor for that. Uh, so we'll put that on there like that. Just to make sure that that's fed as quick as it can get fed. Uh, and then we want the truck stop. Now the truck stop's quite big. A truck station, I should sort of call it. It has two inputs and one output. Uh, we will be using... Uh, we need to make sure that the inputs and outputs are aligned correctly. Uh, we won't be using the output on this one, but the output is if you want to uh, belt away whatever the truck brings to this station. This is the actual uh, station that takes goods in and basically loads them into the truck, so we're not going to belt anything out of here. Now, we could orient it either way. We could orient it like that, or we could orient it like that. It really doesn't make much difference uh, in terms of what the truck's going to do. But what we can do is... Let's try and get this lined up. Notice the loading area. We need to make sure that the truck gets in there. Um, but we will... Let's see, what is the entrance? Entrance is here, okay. So if we was to put it something like that, then 
we have two inputs. Now, the one on the left here, the one with the, the tanks on it, this is the fuel for the truck. So whatever you put, whatever you load into here, be it biofuel or coal or whatever, that will fuel the truck. Whatever you load into this will go into its um, inventory, its storage area. You can see the fuel comes into there and then the storage goes into here. When the truck comes into this space uh, and stops, the loading arm works and in one kind of shot, if you like, it will immediately uh, load the truck. Let me get rid of that. I'm just gonna I'm gonna talk while we do this. It will immediately load the truck with fuel if there is any in the area, and um, the actual goods, whatever they are. That's annoying. You can't put that down there. Cause terrain. Uh, we'll just put a wall around this just to make it much safer as well. I don't want to go falling off at some point. It's quite a long drop for me. Uh, if you go venturing that way, it's your own fault, tough. Right, so what we need to do, because we're going to use coal for the... Let's get rid of all this nonsense. Because we want to use coal for the payload and the fuel, we're going to basically split it. Do you know what? That's just annoying, isn't it? Can I actually cut this down? Let's see if it'll work. There we go. the stick back on grab oh let's, let's not worry about that uh grab the logistics splitter and we're going to basically take the input from this thing so we'll press control we'll flick it around press control like that so a very short exit like this and uh again we're going to use mark ii conveyors because this is going to be outputting at 120 a minute, which is what a Mark II belt can deal with. So 120 into the container, 120 into the splitter, and then it's going to be 60 uh, into here. See, as it shuts at such a short space, um, actually, it doesn't really matter whether we uh, whether we bother upgrading or not. This does not bother. I was going to do the fast belt into here as well, but it really doesn't matter. There you go. That's that's literally it. It's going to split the the contents of this into the into the fuel and into the loading area we will need to program the truck to basically come here stop it will load and then drive off and obviously going to have to re record the path going down here which is you know i'm not saying it's tr it's not really tricky but it's just you know give it a little more a little bit more space just in case like that and also if you want to drive up here ourselves uh, at these turnaround points i'd like to have a better breathing room uh, you can see what I did with the power. I decided to put the power poles on its own ledge rather than take up space on the bridge. Again, just to avoid, you know, hitting it, basically. So I've done that. And all we need to do now is complete the power connection back to the main grid. And that will come alive. That will just start loading coal straight into the truck station. Then we'll need to build a tractor that we can use uh, for the automate because I don't want to lose this. So we'll need to build a second tractor. There we go. And uh, we can program it. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, right, so... Oh, there's the power connection. See it? Uh, stop. I knew we had one somewhere. If we belt over to that... I assume that's still connected. That might be a bit far. Okay, we'll put another one here. There we go. And then that to Okay, now if if all is right and we've done this correctly, assuming that's linked, then that should be online. But there's no real way of checking without driving over though. Um, actually, yes there is. Yes there is. If we look at the power line. We should be able to see the energy statistics. If we can't, it means it's not connected to the grid. There you go. So we can see consumption and capacity. I would have thought that would have been a bit higher, considering we just put that online. I can't see any movement from here. Okay, let's assume it's working. Uh, let's see what it'll cost for another tractor. Five beacons and some more modular frames, so we're going to have to nip back. I don't think I have... The ability to 
make all of that because we'd need let's have a look what's in the back actually actually reinforced iron plates maybe we can do it you know so iron we quickly throw together modular frame actually we can okay so we need vehicles so if you click vehicles and you click tractor and you click plus it will add it to a build queue and then you can see what it is that you need to make which can be quite handy so rotors for example we're gonna have to make a bunch of screws here and then the rotors we need uh, oh we've got 30 of 10 we don't need to make those beacons we need five of we can't make beacons in the back of this thing really annoyingly it has to be in a workshop so we need five four beacons three four five like that and then we can get rid of that and then modular frames uh, that's heavy modular frame we don't want that two right so now we should be able to spawn another vehicle uh, but what we'll do is we'll just quickly drive back to the main base and we'll build we need to build our truck station and then we need to work out where the actual coal is going to be belted into the factory all right we've got a couple of options here um, we can either build the uh, coal, sorry, the truck, the truck station here, and then belt it in that way into the upstairs because we need it upstairs for the steel. So we can either do that and bring it in from this side, or I thought, well, you know, there's an elevation here which is pretty much dead space. You know, I don't know what we're going to do with it. So why not maybe build it up here? Why not have the, you know, the trucks? The truck's got to go that way. Um, towards the thing so maybe we can you know plop it up here and we're already pretty elevated at this point so then it's just a matter of building some uh, conveyor into that uh, conveyor entry into that bit and we can just belt it straight in that way so I think that's what we'll do just because it sounds you know a little bit more fun so if we find try and find the high points here maybe around there just so that because if you but if you start at low point like this as you start to build up you end up in the ground so if, if you're on a slope i try and find the high point and then you know you can always build deeper foundations if you need to there are the four meter ones but let's if we go and have a quick look yeah two meters are still cutting it right now it's fine okay that's possibly big enough uh so what we want is the we want the truck station and then remember the exit port on it that will come out the back and it will go into a container um and then from a container it will go into there so we're going to be looking at let's see if we build the container first and then we know what we need to build up against maybe something like something like that that's the other thing the foundations are for is um just basically the grid aspects allows you to sort of lay things out in a very linear fashion i find we'll put that in as well. uh we may need to come one more square this way like i say because this thing is mahusive um there we go so maybe uh we want space at the back of it um let's go one more out I'd rather not be cramped. We've got plenty of concrete. We don't need to squeeze things in. So maybe something like that. And we'll come this side. Look here. Then we'll just finish off this. Make sure the truck can get on and off it, no problem. So I'll switch the two meter slopes like that. If we if we put the slopes all around, it just makes life easier later when you're you're approaching this in a vehicle. That should really be a four meter, so we just take those out there. And then switch quickly to the four meter 
Actually, we can't. Yes, we can. We? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And then, you know, we could put the ramp like that. It doesn't look so great, but. I will let you put that there like this. A block underneath. Come on, game. Which pixel only needs to look at? That's the one. Okay, so I've got a slightly different slope here to what we've got there, which is a little bit annoying. So we'll just change that to a steep one. It doesn't matter. It really, really doesn't matter. It's just aesthetics. We could make them all uh, steep if we want to. Now, what's going on around the back here? So the when the truck drops all the goods into here, it's going to throw it out the back. I'll tell you why one thing we need to do is power the truck station. I didn't do that. <laughs> uh, now, what I want to do is just split it. And I'll tell you why we want to split it, because we need to fuel the truck as well. Now, in theory, it could probably do that journey, no problem. Um, so we probably don't need to split it. But the interest of completeness, um, we shall do so anyway. So we'll just have a, a slow belt feeding back into the fuel. Now, don't put it into that one. <laughs> Because if you put it to that one, the f he's going to unload the fuel, take it back, bring it back here, bring it back there. It's, it's just going to go around in circles, so be careful about that one. Other than that, we'll have Mark II belt. And Mark II belt. That. So we'll fast unload it. Fast unload it into here. And then we're going to dispatch it uh, into there. But for now, what we'll do is we'll just build our second tractor. And we'll program the journey it has to take. So, actually, before we do that, let's actually put some power into this whole setup, shall we? Uh, where's the nearest power connection? There should be one, there's one. There should be one coming in from here, so we'll just put a pole on to the wall like that. Okay, so that should power the truck station. So yeah, coal comes in, gets fed back a little bit. Like once that belt's full up, which it will be very quickly, all the coal will be going this way. So it's it really isn't anything to worry about. Um, it's just going to provide a buffer for the return journey. So if we build a second tractor, which I can't because I need two modular frame. Because I just used it on the factory, I think. Okay, so this is the one that's going to be doing the running around. Now, it will need fuel, of course. But I'm going to put some coal in the back if I have any. I think I might have some in this truck. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. And then we can see how this all works. So I think what we'll do is we'll drive to the other side and program it from there because I need to turn that truck station on. Okay. Here we are, back at the uh, the actual coal mine. Uh, I put a power cable in there so you can see this thing started to fill up now. So it wasn't filling up, which means this is going to be pretty near full. So that's fine. We didn't lose any coal during that because of the storage buffer that I absolutely love doing. Um, as you can see, coal is starting to fill up into here. Uh, the actual fuel side of things 100 capacity has completely loaded up uh, the only thing that's happening now is we're waiting for this to load up and i can see that we're gonna have to upgrade that to mark two that's already a mark two belt isn't it yeah that's a mark two belt because otherwise the loading speed is just way too slow and now it's starting to fill up a hundred in a in a square and you can see all that time we was out basically doing that stuff that's how many it made. So the, the actual buffer in this thing is huge. It really is huge. Now for the fun bit. Let's have a quick look how much fuel we have. Uh, we have 58. So that should get topped up when we pull into here. Now then. We want to record the routing. So we go start recording. And we'll need to stop and start here. If you remember. Actually, let's cancel that. 
let's let's move over here and watch what happens when we enter the truck station area like that so it comes over it drops a huge cube in the back and what that's done is it's basically loaded the fuel up to 100 and whatever this thing had in the back there it loaded into the vehicle itself notice that this is loading and this does not continue to load it only happens once when you drive in and also when you do do this make sure your truck is completely empty right so now we can get on with the so imagine we've completed the circuit we come back here and we're going to stop right there so we're going to start recording Let's start leaving a little breadcrumb now do be careful when you're driving around this this thing there's no huge rush you know it's not going to make a massive difference but it will make a massive difference if you fall off because you're going to have to recover your truck and do all this again and that's a fat but once this is set up it works surprisingly well it really is quite satisfying seeing it work it just reminds me of a there was a toy in the 70s called the big track and it looked something like this except it had six wheels and you used to add a keypad on top and you'd program it you know go forward 50 units turn right 45 degrees go forward 80 units it was it was tedious to program but it was fun once you hit go on that thing it was so much fun Okay, so we just need to decide which side we're going to come in. It really doesn't matter, but just for ease of programming recording, we'll go this way. Now you'll see the opposite will happen when we stop here. Stop like that. Wait for the cube. And then off we go. Now, the cool thing is, because it left a little breadcrumb trail, we can very easily retrace our steps. We don't have to try and remember how we got here. And also, once you have recorded this, um, you can go up to these individual blue triangle things and edit the node so that you can actually make some adjustments to it. But if you get it right the first time, you don't generally need to do that. It's just that later on, like say, um, say I wanted to have trucks on this, two trucks on this route, I can't because it's not wide enough, is it? Um, it's only it's only wide enough for one truck, so I'd have to make this a two lane. And then I'd have to edit these nodes so that we had like a one-way system. We go down one side, come back the other. And then we can run as many many trucks in the shuttle as we want. But for now, we really don't have that problem. That's just a scaling issue later. Okay. Quite a good turning circle on this thing, which is great. then the only important thing is oh no I've come in the wrong way I'm gone I forgot we came in this way and finish recording now I do hope yeah that loaded up let's just double check it did even though we kind of drove through there twice here, I mean you know we, we could sort of faff around with these nodes here and um tidy them up but that that will work as it stands right now we can prove it because if you get in the tractor and put it on enable autopilot and jump out off it goes now it's kind of a pity you can't hitch a ride back but other than that it will now diligently <laughs> it's, it's just so much fun to watch it really cracks me up look <laughs> It's just fantastic. I mean, you know, the journey there is not going to take very long, but um, it will complete a circuit fairly quickly. Right, I shall wait for it to come back. Here it comes. <laughs> I'm going to try and get out of its way. Let's stand in this corner and hope it doesn't knock me off. Actually, hmm. it's not not far to fall. It's fine. So, yeah, it uh, took it about, I don't know, a minute or so, minute and a half, and back it comes. Don't forget of this slope here, it's going to struggle a little bit because it is a steep slope. I did say to you, it, it does struggle a little bit with the steep slopes. 
But that, we can't inspect it. We'd have to jump in to inspect it. But that will now be empty. And uh, whatever's in this truck stop is about to get loaded. Let's see if we can run past and check. We got stuck on the door frame then, you see it. Okay, so a few hundred coal. That will trigger it to drop. No coal, see? Now we could edit this, we could like delete these nodes here and just get rid of the superfluous ones so it just kind of goes straight from there to there. Um, but I just thought I'd show you that before we do that. There you go. So double loaded in fact, and then off it continues. It's super, super cool. And that is how you do automated truck delivery. Now one last thing, have we got any beacons on us? No, I think I left the beacons in the... Uh, let's try and check a workshop. Now. See if we can make, quickly make a beacon. I want to show you something. There we go. Um, if we take our beacon, double click, put it in our hand, and then th say throw it, I don't know, we could throw it over here. Like that. Okay, put it there, then fine. Uh, if we hover over this, like that, and press the E key, we can name it so we can say uh, coal. Oops, hang on. Where's the mouse gone? There we go. Coal truck pickup. Like that. Close that. Now notice the radar at the top of the screen. See that? It now says coal truck pickup. You can use these and basically it really helps to navigate your way around. Later on when you want to know where something is, you can just look around. Coal truck pickup. Now the other thing is, if you use too many of them, obviously your little radar at the top compass thing starts to get a bit cluttered uh, currently there's no way to sort of turn them off and filter them like you can in something like Subnautica but with the beacons but they are still pretty useful anyway that is automated coal pickup uh, hope you enjoyed that I thought it was fun uh, we've now got coal which means in the next episode we can crack on and make some steel take care guys happy manufacturing